You can call me Billy Mays because yes, there's more from wires to warmups, A1's flaws flirt with flames and poor plastic paths produce puzzling print patterns. All this and more Print Fix Friday, episode 207. Next week is four freaking years. Let's get into it. Starting off with a post from a Bamboo Lab user group on Facebook saying, so I woke up to whatever you call this melted. Can someone please tell me what parts I need to order to fix it? Looks like I need a whole tool head and other parts. We've got a Bamboo Lab A1 that is really really not happy this is again another issue that we've seen with bamboo a1s however while this isn't the only instance we've seen of this i think this has to do with the hot end not being properly attached to the machine itself if we take a look the entire thing looks like it's bent a little bit and while certainly it can bend and get in the way if it runs into something traditionally that happens during a print this I think happened during a print was left alone and because it's kind of contacting but not really contacting it's not reading temperatures correctly causing the machine to effectively go into thermal runaway and not catch itself I'm sorry Miss Jackson Ooh, I am for real. but your printer pretty much needs to be fully replaced. We have been in contact with this user. We are planning to actually do a video call with them to assist in getting this machine running right, determining what the issues are, but she wants to give Bamboo Lab a chance to respond and go through their traditional method of customer service, which is fine. And given this machine is only a couple of months old, this is kind of ridiculous. Traditionally speaking, this is something that can happen to any 3D printer, but most 3D printers have really, really delicate thermal runaway protection. As we've seen in the past, at least in the original first batch bamboo X1 carbons that came out, their thermal runaway protection was nowhere near adequate. And I'm wondering on these A1s, if you don't put in the hot end perfectly, say there's a little bit of a gap and it's transferring some heat and it registers as being okay, could it still get a little spicy? That's what I want to believe here. And the comments on Facebook are a mix between useful and cesspool. So just don't read them. But we were tagged in this wanting us to reach out to try to get these burned parts so we can, again, have them analyzed by experts. And this offer of paying to have them shipped over to us extends to anybody with a Bamboo Lab A1 or P1S that has had these issues. We're also happy to open it up to other 3D printer brands as well, as long as we can kind of track a trend of issues. We don't want to look at like one-off failures as a huge thing, but when we're seeing multiples, and there's, there's literally another one just like this in this episode. So when there is a pattern, we do want to offer it. And with the A1 having a worldwide recall, now major issues with the NTC thermistor on the power supply boards having potentials for them to fail catastrophically. I'm really starting to get nervous about A1s being in the field. Do you think we should get an A1 to do thermal testing on it? Let me know in those comments. And of course, if you do want to support the fact that I'm literally going to buy a printer that we really can't use. So if you're in the Tampa Bay area and want to sell us an A1 for cheap, I'll, I'll sell it back to you for the same price. I, I just, I need ownership of it to do the work on it. Hit me up, because my name's Grant, this is Three Musketeers and Print Fix Friday, where we help you getting your printers back to printing with purpose. If you do enjoy us covering these kinds of things, trying to do our best to inform users out there about potential printer dangers, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. It's time to dissect the machine. Unplug it from the wall, do not plug it back in, and start dissecting the tool head on this machine. We would want to confirm where these issues go. And Bamboo's likely going to tell you to do the same thing. Hey, take off the covers, take some photos, let us analyze and see what's going on to see what parts burned up and why. If it is a user error, okay, looks like it's some plastic stuff. In theory, the electronics are fine, but we don't know for sure. It's an easy thing to check. Just replace the hot end and you'll know for sure. The A1 has what I still think is the most unique mounting system for hot ends out there. It just uses a little spring clip 
if you will, to latch it on. And it is a really, really cool way of doing it. And I think a way that more manufacturers should look at. However, it does pose this particular issue that if your contact isn't dead on with the heater and thermistor that exist sitting on the machine, you have a potential problem for temperature inaccuracies or if something is in the way you have an issue with temperatures here. But I could see it being an issue when you're effectively relying on a regular system to detect everything with their brand new Chevy Silverado. I, I mean, Vortec, which does use induction. I wonder where we've seen that before. Oh yeah, index, card to our index video because you're gonna love it if you haven't seen it yet. And if you have seen it, go watch it again. Super awesome. I'm glad that we have more players in the whole industry of inductive hot ends, but I worry that Bamboo is over-engineering the actual engineering of the machines, but it seems like they're value engineering the electronics on these machines and making them kind of so close to the edge that, well, I'm getting vertigo just looking at it. What are your thoughts here? Because of course we had the Bamboo Vortec, which I will never not make a Silverado joke about. And then just a couple hours later, Prusa put out a tease, which is the core one with index on it. Suffice to say, I'm not going to stand up on camera. Which one are you going with? Why do you like them? Or are you just gonna say, screw it, I'm gonna do an index myself? Love to know down in those comments. But wait, there's more. We have another Bamboo A1, this time with a burned front cover. I don't know. I thought I've all been good enough. I don't know what caused this issue. There are a couple of things that we think could be a rise here. One, it could be getting too darn hot and melting right above it, right? It even says caution hot. Looks like bacon vertically on a build plate. You could also just have this cover, which does come off by the way, touch the hot end and melt a little bit. It seems like a completely normal thing that could happen, but I'm not certain that I've ever seen it happen to anybody before. I feel like you have to do a lot of things wrong to get to that point. We thankfully have a couple more photos and well, I don't like it. It got way too hot. This is not from contacting something. This is absolutely from the machine itself. And I agree with this comment here saying, that is not good. That looks like potentially a wiring issue, maybe lack of insulation that's causing heat to build up. We have some historical data to go off of here because recently they replaced the heating element and fans due to a massive blob failure, which this can happen to any machine regardless whether it's a bamboo or other machine. If you are in the 3D printing industry, chances are you're gonna be dealing with a blob of doom at one point or another. They really suck to deal with, but they're not too difficult if you go about it with a little bit of patience. The best thing to do on something like this is to heat up the machine, get it nice and warm, and then slowly use a pair of pliers to kind of wiggle that blob out. You can use a pair of flush cutters if you want to try to cut off some of the cancerous nodules, if you will, that are further away from the hot end, get it close to the hot end, and then try to slide the rest of it off. But for the price of what A1 parts cost, I can certainly say, I don't know if I'd be bothering with it. I would just go out and replace the parts myself. There's something getting very, very hot in here. And while I am going to leave my clothes on, so stop it, Nelly. What? I'm just kidding like Jason. I don't think that these two issues are too far from each other. Could there be issues with bamboo heaters? We're not certain. But given the fact that they're both A1s, they both have melting, and they both experienced what appears to be some damage to the hot end prior to the melting, wondering if there's something a little bit deeper here. Obviously, correlation does not equal causation here, and until we can test anything, this is speculation at best. But with all the issues that we've seen with the Bamboo A1 now, with over two dozen A1s having what I would say are catastrophic issues. Why don't we pump the brakes a little bit, check the machines, let's verify them and make sure. Because the last thing that I want for any of you, bamboo lovers or haters alike, are to have your machines create insurance problems for not only you, but for me and for everybody else that owns a 3D printer. Because I'm sorry, as they get more popular, issues are bound to happen. I feel like I'm DJ Khaled over here. Another one. We've got an update on one of the Bamboo Lab A1s that was not turning on. Watch this video. You see that? 
You see that wiggle? Damn thing's moving so much. You might call me E40 with some poor man's hydraulics over here. I punch the gas. I hit the brakes. I punch the gas. I hit the brakes. This is what we've been kind of looking for for a while. Where we can kind of point a finger. Is it going to be a bad part or is it going to be bad solder joints? And this that is a joint so cold Snoop himself would not even smoke it. It's Antarctic cold, so cold that it's actually broken off the board itself. And in fact, if we use our ultra super sharp skills of zooming, can we enhance this? We can see an area that looks like there's not even enough solder to cover the hole itself. But looking at these components, they do not look like they got enough heat and when the leads were cut off, potentially there was some extra force applied to that joint that caused it to be fragile and brittle. Is this something that we think is consistent across machines with fires? No, we, we don't because we don't have any of these boards to test with yet. However, this to me is great evidence. And this is in India, by the way, so we can't easily chalk it off to, oh, your country's in the middle of a war or something like that. This very much to me screams manufacturing defect, something that needs to be taken seriously because this exact part that you see wiggling on that board is the part that has been failing on not only A1s, but P1Ss. Even those individual sets as a capacitor, it is not, it is an NTC thermistor. And yes, as I've said previously, I thought it was a metal oxide varistor. It is not, it is an NTC thermistor. Thank you to those that have corrected us in the comments and on Reddit. Thank you for allowing us to make the correct statements. I'd love that. Thank you so much. Please check your machines. It doesn't take much to check it. And you got a thermal camera. It could even be pretty cool. That's all I'm saying. Moving away from more bamboo drama, because quite frankly, I'm getting tired of it, and I bet you all are too. Let's look at an Anycubic Cobra 3, where we got some lines, and they are somewhat consistent. This, to me, is indicative of a little bit of Z-wobble. So we can see this is an Anycubic Cobra 3. It likely has their AMS thing, whatever you want to call it. Likely, we've got some binding in that Z-axis. The pattern itself is a lot tighter down at the bottom, and it gets further apart as we go higher up the model. That, to me, says we've got some binding in the movement of the Z-lead screws, especially down toward the bottom of the part. Like the top commenter says, go ahead and lube the screws just in case. It's not going to hurt. Be careful. Don't over lubricate. If you do, the Z screw itself should clean it up, but a little bit of lube goes a long way, or so I'm told. But the other thing to check to make sure is that the lead screws themselves aren't bent. While it's not technically something that we believe is going on here, it's an easy thing to check. Pull the lead screw off the machine and just roll it across the table. Does it roll smoothly or do you hear it go bump, 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 bump as you're spinning it? If it's bumping, it's bent. But if it's rolling smooth, then likely you have a misalignment of your X axis along the Z axis. The best way to handle this, depending on the machine, is either take the Z all the way up or all the way down. My preference is to go all the way up and let the machine basically ram into itself. The motors will skip steps and that should get them reasonably in alignment. That's our way of doing it. It's a little bit archaic, but it works. And on older machines like the Prusa Mark III's, it's how Prusa does it. They ram it all the way up into the top. They let the motor skip and hey, it's good enough for government work. But you do want to get it a little bit better. There are videos out there of using things like soup cans, soda cans, two things that are of the exact same size that are mass manufactured. So they're close enough and to move the Z axis down until it contacts those two things turn off the motors, move the Z lead screws yourself, and that should go ahead and get it in place. But me, send it up, let the motor drivers figure it out for me. Works every time. But this could also just be machine wobble. When you're dealing with a machine like the Cobra 3, it uses V wheels. Not the same V wheels that we're used to on like Enders or machines like that, but it still uses V wheels. So the video that we did a while back of basically tightening the V wheels on an Ender, still valid, so I'll card to it for you guys as well. These wheels will have an eccentric nut on them. That eccentric nut basically deals with the amount of tension that all those wheels have on the axis. There might be one, maybe two wheels per axis that has these screws on them. And while you might say, Grant, it's fine, it might be, but it's an easy thing to check. On the X axis, it is normally the one on the bottom. Just check, is your X axis wiggly? If it's wiggly, 
make it not wiggly. That's simple. Don't over tighten it. You still want it to move freely, but you don't want it to wiggle. And I'm betting that's where we're seeing the lines from. It's from wiggle in the axes. The nice thing about these metal wheels that you see is that they really don't have issues with long-term wear. Once you get the tension set, they're pretty much okay. The downside to these are that it is very difficult to get the tension set for metal wheels compared to the plastic wheels. The plastic wheels, if it's a little too tight, they'll wear themselves down until they're right. Metal, it's not gonna easily do that. Last but not least, we've got bad extrusion at corners. This one, if you're new to the industry, you might not know. It is a very simple one for me and for some of you that are probably watching this video, part warped. This is over extrusion in the corners. Well, this whole side of the part. If the rest of it looks great and the edges are the areas that look bad, chances are your part warped. I bet if we scroll down into the comments, we're going to see it. Thanks. I think it's due to warping at the bottom. I'll try printing it with a brim because remember kids, if you like it, then you should put a brim on it. Brims don't take a long time at all. And if you're trying to remember what a brim versus a skirt is, remember a brim is attached to your hat. I'll let editor Rob show you what a hat looks like. And a skirt flows around you. Nope, I'm not gonna show you what that is either. <laughs> Uh, you've joined the only grant rants for that or join our discord at the ten dollar tier and higher because we've done some crazy things in there anyways a brim is easy cheap insurance for 3d printers and if you're wondering but grant how do i get rid of the brim deburring tools these are cheap as chips seriously you can get them for like sub 10 bucks prime delivered to your house so get one with extra blades too just in case and uh get multiples because you'll probably lose them and then you'll find them and then you have multiples. These tools are awesome and will be able to take the brims off of even the most complicated parts because, well, it's on a swivel. So I wanna know, does this ever happen to you? I know it's happened to me before and uh, certainly <laughs> last time it happened, the part was so well stuck to the build plate, the whole build plate warped off of the machine. If you are in that scenario where your entire plate has warped up, sticking down some extra binder clips like we used to do back in the day for those glass beds, it should get you taken care of. Just like the names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher, making it possible for us to be one episode away from four freaking years. Remember, next week is going to be a completely different show than normal. It's going to be Grant Reed's mean comments, and you know, maybe we'll fix a fail or two, but I think you guys will enjoy it. And you know, hey, since we've had all this interesting news come out this week, maybe we get uh, some Grant rants about companies and what they're doing with their marketing and God knows what else. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you want to see down in those comments below. But if you do want to support the efforts that we do here by joining, you can do so. $10 cheer and higher, not only get your name in lights, but you also get to come hang out with myself and the entire 3D Musketeers team in our private Discord server. Links to all of that are in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys do have a wonderful day. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.